Hey, we're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 uh, today, uh, but it is 11.15. Um, so why don't we turn there, and I'm going to give you my first point, and then we're going to go. I was planning on getting into the rapture, but you can't do that. You can't do the rapture in uh, 15 minutes. You'll be asking for the rapture because we'd go over. So, First Thessalonians four thirteen. It says this, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep or those who have died, that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. That's the first verse. That's kind of where we're going to land today. I want you to look at verse 18, same chapter. This should bring, this topic, this passage, it should bring encouragement, it should bring hope, it should do away with um, grieving like other people grieve because they have no hope. And understand, you know, we are a people that We're supposed to be encouraged. We're not supposed to walk around like other people walk around in this world, confused. Uh, But as verse 18 says, encourage one another with these words. So the first verse of 13 is, hey, I don't want you uninformed. Ignorance and being uninformed will lead to a hopelessness. It will lead to people walking around confused and not understanding what's going on. And the heart of the Father, because the heart of the Father is love, He wants His people to walk with a hope. He wants His people to walk with an expectation. He wants His people to walk with an excitement. He wants His people to walk with encouragement. And that is why this passage here that we'll get into next week is so important. And I want you to read ahead, and I want you to, to, to get into this passage, because not, not only are we going to go through 4, 13 through 18 next week, but we're also going to uh, uh, get into chapter 5 as well. And it is all about the last days. It is all about the rapture. It is all about the second coming. It's all about the man of lawlessness that's going to appear. It's also about the reign of Christ that is coming. And a lot of these end time things, they can overwhelm us. They can freak us out. But understand, if, we're, if we have that opinion where we're afraid or we're worried or we're concerned, that's not biblical. This section of Scripture, 13 through 18, is where we're going to talk about this thing called the rapture. And a lot of times we get divided in the church about this subject. Is it pre-rapture, uh, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post? Is it, gonna, is it just going to come like Revelation 19 and there is no rapture? And there's all of this debate, there's all of this controversy, and we'll get into that. But what I want to say to the church of Jesus Christ, listen, verse 13, verse 18, be hopeful, be encouraged, not argue. And when we argue about this stuff, we're at a wrong place in the church. So today, my first and only point that I want you to walk away with is this. Jesus is coming. Whether he comes pre, whether he comes mid, whether he comes post, whether he comes after, like he is coming. And that is really, really good news. Let's look at the book of Thessalonians real quick. This first book, 1 Thessalonians, I want you to go to verse 10. Go to verse 10, please. Wow. 
What did the pastor talk about in church today? Jesus is coming. That's it. One point. One and done, baby. 1 Thessalonians 1.10. And to wait for his son from heaven. So that's what we are doing. Whom he raised from the dead. Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. I don't know about you, but that's good news. And I'm glad Jesus is coming to deliver us from the wrath that is to come. That should encourage you. Again, we have to get beyond pre, mid, post. And we have to understand what scripture is saying. Jesus is coming and he wants to deliver you from the wrath that is to come. I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. It says, now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you. So that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at what? The coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Jesus is coming. Be holy. Walk in love with one another. Be encouraged. Be hopeful. Jesus is coming. He may come pre. He may come mid. He may come post. He may come just like rest, But he is coming. And we can't lose sight of that fact that he is going to come. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Let me just give you a little heads up. I, I believe in the pre-trib, okay? Me personally. If you don't and I'm wrong and you're mid and you have ammo and guns and food and I'm wrong, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> and because you are a Christian, you got to let me in. And I will apologize. And because you're a Christian... I'll say, forgive me for teaching you wrong, but can I borrow? Anyway. (laughs) What if Jesus did it like this? Whatever you believe, that's what you'll get. Whoa. Now we're all pre. We're all pre, Jesus. We're all pre. See, see, which one is it? Which one is it? Oh, man. And listen, I've had people tell me, oh, you, you better preach you know, uh, a post, because if, if your church ain't, ain't ready for the, for the tribulation, you're doing a disservice as a watchman on the wall, and God's going to hold you accountable. Here's the deal. Church, be like the Bereans. Search it out. Search it out. We're going to talk about all of them. I can't make you choose the one I chose. I can tell you why I chose it. But it's up to you to draw that conclusion. Just like I can't save you. I can give you the gospel, but I can't save you. You've got to make that choice. And this is a secondary issue. It's not an essential doctrine for salvation. It's a secondary issue. So we, should, we shouldn't divide because we don't want to get off of the main point, which is what? Jesus is coming. How? When? He's going to come. I want you to turn to 1 Thessalonians 4.15. This is one long point. Yeah, Jesus is coming. I want you to see the book so we don't miss in all the controversial stuff the main point, which is Jesus is coming. 1 Thessalonians 4.15. So that we who are alive and are left until the coming of the Lord, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven. And so it is saying that the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven. Jesus is coming. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, please. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the what? Coming of the Lord Jesus. Paul's praying this at the end of the book. This book. Be blameless because Jesus is coming. 
Are you ready? Are you excited? Or are you like me? There's a little bit of fear there. Because I can look back over my life and say, man, did I really, really, really lay it all out? Are there people right now that I know are going to go to hell and I haven't had the conversation with them and I don't want them to go to hell? Are there decisions that I know I should have made, but I didn't because, you know what, we're saved by grace, not by work, so I think I'm cool. I don't need to be that extra. When I was a single man that came to Christ, Jesus, please don't come until I get married. I just want to get married. That was a single man that didn't really understand the glory. That what you could experience with Christ and in Christ when the corruptible puts on the incorruptible. So some of us have had that conversation. Don't come back, Jesus, until, until I have kids. Don't come back, Jesus. And then there's some of us that are elders that are like, oh, Jesus, come. <laughs> ah. Are you ready? Are you excited? Is there fear? Is there, would there be regret in your heart? We don't want to be like the church in Thessalonica who believed that there's a rapture, and so we're just going to quit working. We're chilling. And in the second book of Thessalonians, Paul really gets into that in a deep way where he's, he actually says, if you don't work, you don't eat. But are we living in such a way where Christ's coming really, really, really excites me? Or are there things that he's put on my heart that I didn't do because <sighs> busyness of life? Cares of the world, deceitfulness of riches have choked out the life of the seed. And I know deep within my heart right now that if he came, this would get left undone. This has not nothing to do with your salvation because, again, you are saved by, by your faith through grace, it is not that of your works, lest anyone should boast, but some of you have been given a job, but you haven't embraced the job. You haven't said, yes, Lord. I, I, I had my hand on the plow, and I was plowing, but, but ooh, did you see that girl over there? And now you're plowing crooked, or man over there. <laughs> or deceitfulness of riches or cares of this world, and the hands have been taken off the plow. And Jesus said, once your hands are on the plow, whoever looks back, it's not, not fit for the kingdom. And we're not seeking the kingdom first with all that we have, with all of our heart. And so, guys, this passage, 13 through 18, should be a passage that encourages us, that gives us hope, but also understand that Jesus is coming. And am I ready to meet my maker? Am I ready to stand before him, to have those eyes of fire and flame where I can't deflect, where I can't make excuses, where it's just him and me? It's not my pastor. It's not my parents, but it's him and me. And he's looking dead in my eyes. And I'm waiting for that well done, good and faithful servant. Is there a fear there? Is there, is there a, a, a hesitation there? Is there regret that's there? Church, 
He's coming. He's coming. And it should excite us, but it should also do other things to us. We don't want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who sleep so that you may not grieve as others do with no hope. One verse, one point, Jesus is coming. Worship team, if you could come up, please. The Holy Spirit is in this place. Jesus, we look forward to your coming. It gives us hope. There's excitement. We can't wait. We can't wait to see you. But God, I know there's people in here that actually are afraid. You haven't given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And so, God, I I pray, Lord, as we are your people, as we are your children, as we look forward to you coming again, Jesus, that we would make our calling and election sure, that, that we would work out our salvation with fear and trembling, that we would have our hearts, God, before you. And God, that you would continue to remove what doesn't belong so that we can look forward with this hope and and we can be encouraged and we can be completely excited because we know we're doing what you've called us to do and we're resting in the finished work of the cross. We're resting in the resurrection. We're resting in what you have done, God. But we're also joining with you in what you are doing. So God, this church... We need revival. We need your presence, God. More than anything else, we need your presence. That we would walk in such a way where we would not grieve you, Holy Spirit. That we would begin to join you in the work that you've given us to do. So we could sing with a greater and greater excitement. Yes, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, come. You are coming, Jesus. Continue to make your bride ready. Continue to bathe us with your holy word, Jesus, so that we could shine with beauty and splendor and become radiant like you've called us to be. As we sing and as we worship, I pray, God, for those that are here that there would be such a move of God this morning that your spirit would fall, that you would inhabit the praises of your people, that you would give us undivided hearts. Undivided hearts, God. As we walk with you. And Lord, if there is anyone that is here today that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior, I pray, Father, that you would cause them to fall on their face before you, to ask for forgiveness of their sins, and to put their faith in what you have done on the cross, to invite you in Jesus, to be their God, to be their Savior, to be their King, and that they would decide today to follow you. Because you are the resurrection and you are the life. And I pray, God, as they pray that prayer, that they would understand your Holy Spirit is going to come inside of them. And you now are going to live your life through them as king. Help us, God, to seek your kingdom first as your people. And may we be excited and overwhelmed with joy at your coming, Jesus. 
continue to make your bride ready in Jesus' name.